Hello everyone. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the rotor syndrome. This is a syndrome which is very similar to Dubin Johnson syndrome. So let's start. So this is an autosomal recessive condition which leads to conjugated hyperbilirubinemia, which means that there is an excess amount of conjugated bilirubin in the blood. Now it is characterized by non-hemolytic jaundice. And the most important point, a defect in the OATP1, B1 or B3 is seen. Now let's try to understand the pathophysiology. So take this to be a representation of a hepatocyte. So normally the unconjugated bilirubin comes inside the hepatocyte mostly after RBC breakdown. Now this unconjugated bilirubin is converted into conjugated bilirubin with the help of an enzyme called UDPGT. Now most of the conjugated bilirubin is sent into the bile ducts with the help of this channel. What is the name of this channel? It is the MRP2 or multi-drug resistance protein 2. So most of the conjugated bilirubin goes through here. By the way, this is a channel which is defective in Dubin Johnson syndrome. I've already made a video on that so you can check it out. Now some of the conjugated bilirubin actually goes back to the portal circulation through different channels. After going back, this conjugated bilirubin again comes back into the hepatocyte through a channel. The name of this channel is what you have to remember. It is a OATP1B1 which we saw in the start. Now in rotor syndrome, this is defective. Due to this, the conjugated bilirubin will not be able to go back into the hepatocyte and will start to increase in the blood. Now what are the clinical features? So obviously the conjugated bilirubin will increase. This will lead to non-itching jaundice. And what are the symptoms of jaundice? You already know. There will be yellowish skin and also yellowing of the sclera. Now how are you going to diagnose this condition? So we can do liver function tests where we will see serum conjugated bilirubin which will be increased. The SGOT and SGPT will be normal because these enzymes are mostly increased when there is an injury to the hepatocyte. As seen in autoimmune hepatitis or viral hepatitis, the serum alkaline phosphatase will also be normal. Now we can do Brom sulfalene test. So let's try to understand what this test is exactly. This test can even be used to differentiate between rotor syndrome and Dubin Johnson syndrome. Let's see how. So again, here is the hepatocyte with the OATP, which is defective. Now the other channel that we saw was MRP2, right? Which is defective in Dubin Johnson syndrome. Now imagine that there is a patient with rotor syndrome and you gave him a dye. So this dye is going to go in the hepatocytes. Now after going in, it also has to come out, right? So this dye exits the hepatocyte through different channels, mostly through MRP2. So in rotor syndrome, since this is not defective, it will easily pass through and the dye will then go in the bile ducts. But comparing it with Dubin Johnson syndrome, here since the MRP2 will not be working, the dye will not be able to go forward and will regurgitate back in the blood. Now we can even check the urinary porphyrin values which will be increased. This is another differentiating factor from Dubin Johnson syndrome where it is normal. But there is one thing that you have to remember which is that normally coproporphyrin 3 is more than 1. This is normal. But in rotor syndrome this ratio is actually reversed. So here 1 is more than 3. Now we can do oral cholecystography where the gallbladder will be visualized. Now let's try to understand this. So this is a liver with the gallbladder and let's zoom into this part specifically. Now again when we will give the dye, this dye will be able to go through the bile ducts into the gallbladder and everywhere. And if the dye reaches the gallbladder, the gallbladder will be visualized. This is the reason that we say that the gallbladder visualization is seen in rotor syndrome. But we saw in Dubin Johnson syndrome that the dye was not able to pass through, right? That's why in that disease, the gallbladder will not be visualized. So this is an other differentiating factor that you have to remember. Finally, the liver. The liver here will look normal and no pigmentation will be seen. Comparing it with Dubin Johnson syndrome, there the liver will actually become black because of epinephrine metabolites. So again, another differentiating factor. I will be making another video very soon where I'll be comparing all the congenital hyperbilirubinemias, which will be a summary of all the diseases. 
there I will again mention all these differences that we talked about here. So do check that video out. But for now, that's it for this video. If you have any doubts, so please leave them in the comments or you can message me on Instagram anytime. The link to my Instagram is in the description. Thank you.